The ZR1, guys, it's looking awesome. Finally lowered, it sits really nicely. It's got that beautiful stance, but that leaves the question, how do you get this thing up in the air when you need to work underneath it? Luckily, yeah, there's a jack for that. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for pressing play. Today, we have an exciting one. Today, we got finally, finally got the tool that every garage needs, in my opinion. Yes, it's the quick jacks. So we're going to get them set up and we're going to get the ZR1 up on them, hopefully. All right, guys. So here they are. This is what arrived at my doorstep. Two very large, heavy packages with a third one being a little smaller and a little less heavy. But at the end of the day, these are both about, what, 90 pounds a piece, you'd say? Yeah, pretty close to 100 pounds just each here so 200 pounds there and then this one's probably about 30 to 40 pounds so this is a very large shipment but at the end of the day quick jack sent these out to me so big thank you to quick jack because they really really knocked it out of the park i've been looking for these things for quite some time now you guys know i am a giant fan of the race ramps which i have over here these are really good for getting the car up off the ground if you don't need to do anything with the wheels if you need to pull those wheels off for any reason you can't really use the race ramps and that's where the quick jacks come in so we're going to unbox these these things we're going to put it together i am going to show you how i'm going to use them and why you might want one for your corvette so let's get into unboxing these things so the unboxing of this is relatively easy we already cut the straps off so the cardboard boxes just kind of come apart and we're just gonna pull everything out they're packaged pretty interestingly though because what you're seeing there underneath those straps is actually wood so they they package these things in a way that they're not going to break in shipping <laughs> So here we go, everything's unboxed, guys. You can see both the rails, the power unit itself, some of the blocks that you can use to jack your car up, all of the connectors there, the tubes. What it doesn't come with, just so you guys know, it doesn't come with something that you actually need, and that is going to be automatic transmission fluid. So right here is the fluid. It doesn't really matter what you get, they just recommend that it is synthetic. You're gonna need two and a half quarts from what I've read. We have three just in case. Now, Quick Jack was nice enough to also send me the hooks. So these basically go in the wall and they will kind of mount these probably up here on my garage wall, right next to my ZR1 dedicated poster. You can see all the ZR1s here, as well as my VIN number down there at the bottom, which is pretty cool. I really like that idea. But somewhere up here on the wall, I'll probably mount them just to keep them up off the ground and try to keep my garage looking as nice as possible. So here's the tolerances we're playing with here, guys. Yeah, she barely fits, but she fits, so it'll work. First step, remove this bolt right here on the end of the quick jack strut. Second step is to put this little valve on to the same plug we just removed and tighten it down. It is an 11 16 wrench and it should be angled up towards the back of that strut just a little bit. So it'll go that way, tighten it down. Next step, this little jumper hose right here is gonna go right onto that threaded angle that we just attached a second ago. There's no Teflon tape or thread sealing or anything required for this particular connection. The other end is a male fitting end and it does require the thread sealant that comes with the actual kit. So we'll put a little bit of that on and then this particular quick connect is going to go right on there on the sealed end, just like that. Next step is to add 40 to 50 PSI in the little cylinder here right next to the big quick jack cylinder. So once we get between 40 and 50 PSI in there, we'll move on to the next step. The next step is going to be the long hoses here. Gets both of the bigger female adapters. And of course, we're gonna put the thread seal on both ends and put those adapters on both this hose and the other longer hose over there. And then we are on to the next step. The next step is a hard one, guys. You gotta connect these two hoses. Broke a sweat. So obviously the, the other side of the hose will connect to the pump in a second, but we gotta put the quick connects on there too. On the unit, we're gonna go ahead and remove the shipping plugs. 
bottom first. There is a little bit of fluid actually in there already. So uh, it looks like they probably tested this at the factory or something. But we're gonna go ahead and do the bottom first. Uh, you don't need any kind of Teflon on there because it already has a washer. So just kind of tighten it down and move on to the top one. Next step, fill it up with some automatic transmission fluid. Like I said, it's gonna take about two and a half quarts. Yummy. Next step is bleeding, guys. We're gonna go ahead and plug both of them into the actual power unit. Then we're gonna pull it up a little bit and then we're gonna drain any air that might be in the system by loosening that Allen key right there. That will kind of allow any air that's in the system to come out while leaving the fluid in the lines instead. You only have to do this the initial time and then you'll never have to do this again. So we're testing it for the first time. We're gonna go ahead and hit up. And these will, from what Quick Jack says, might be a little bit erratic. So we're watching both of these kind of go up and down. We're gonna go up and down a couple different times and then eventually we're gonna go ahead and crack that bleed screw and get any air out of the system. But going up and down, you can kind of see they're not exactly behaving like they should because there is still air in that system. While we're doing this part, you guys wanna keep in mind when you're going up with the jack, don't go all the way to the full the first locking position. You wanna go right before the locking position. So we'll go up and then he's actually holding the button down right now, but it's going down very slowly because there's still air in that system. So after we do this a couple times, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and use that Allen key, crack that bleeder valve loose, let any air out while keeping the fluid in. And then these things should operate normally. Really not much. All right, so we've bled these twice now. And they're still kind of going up a little bit erratically, so there's still going to be air in there. But every time we bleed it, it only lets out just a, a tiny little squirt of air. So you got to go up and down a couple times to get these things totally air free. Five minutes later. All right, so here we go, guys. First lift of the ZR1 with the quick jacks. Going. That's funny. Look at that. Oh, I gotta adjust the camera angle. Big thumbs up to Quick Jacks. Look at this thing. Let's get a, let's get another angle. You can actually see underneath the car. How about that? <laughs> yeah. It's gonna make changing oil a lot easier. I can tell you that much. It's a floating car. That's only the first stop, and that's still probably uh, twenty maybe more inches of clearance under there. At the second stop, you could probably use a creeper underneath a car that sits as low as the ZR1. I'm gonna take it up, I'm gonna take it up. I wanna see it all the way up. clearance on that man you could do an exhaust on this thing all right so this thing is locked into place guys so this is the first time i've ever used the quick jacks but look at the freaking clearance here <laughs> that is that's fabulous now obviously i didn't i need to back the car in a little further in the future so i can do this with the garage door closed but look at the clearance you could easily use a creeper underneath there change out some fluids and actually you know what while it's up in the air Let's check this real quick. Man, the clearance here. I am freaking, I'm impressed. I am impressed. And I also see, I need new tires. <laughs> yeah. I am going to get under here, change the oil soon. I'm going to change the transmission fluid and the differential fluid because I'm going to be taking this car to the track. Now I'm going to be able to do it all really easily. All right, so we're going to put it down. And in order to do that, we have to go up first. So once we once we take it all the way up, you got to manually unlock them and then we can go down. Here you go. Yep. Here you go. Okay. All right, so... Obviously, the first time using these quick jacks, it's a little nerve-wracking, but yeah, it's pretty impressive what that, that little unit right there does. So now we can kind of hang these things up on the wall. I'll probably do that another time. 
and uh, these things are ready to go. Anytime I need to get this car up in the air, which is really awesome because like I said, having the lowered car, it's not super easy to get this thing in the air anymore. Either way, I wanted this kind of system anyway because it's a lot easier to get a car in the air using quick jacks than it is hand cranking a jack or even using the race ramps if you need to get the wheels off, those aren't an option. Now, if I just need the car up in the air to change the oil and that's it, those are probably the best way to do it. It's gonna be a lot faster. It's gonna be a less hassle to get set up. But if you need the car level while in the air, taking off the wheels or changing your transmission fluid or differential fluid where you can't really have the car on an incline, quick jacks is the answer for sure. Unless of course you can fit a full lift in your garage, which if you can, that's the way to do it. All right, guys, so that is pretty much gonna do it for the quick jack video. Like I said, three boxes, all kind of heavy, but you could have this exact same kind of experience with your car. So they will fit underneath a C7 Corvette, even if it's lowered. And uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of them sitting much lower than my ZR1 here is. And yeah, you saw how high up it goes in the air. You can do anything you need to do with the car. You can remove the wheels. You can do all of the fluid changes and everything. If you're like me and you like doing your own maintenance to save the possible damaging trip to the dealership, these are definitely the way to do it. Big thumbs up to Quick Jacks. They really hooked us up here. But guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. So if you liked what you saw, please smash that thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking the content so we can keep doing this kind of stuff for you. I would love to continue to update you on the Quick Jacks as my situation kind of evolves. I will be using them a lot in the future. You're gonna see them a lot on the videos, a lot on the channel, because like you know, I do a lot of my own maintenance. But uh, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm gonna have loads of content like this coming. You are not gonna wanna miss. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next upload.